Tonight, we're taking a closer look at something that's been getting a lot of attention recently, the subject of being transgender. We've seen adults share their stories on television shows and in magazines, but rarely do we hear from the youngest members of the transgender community. Tonight, our national correspondent Kate Snow is here with one family's very personal story. Kate? Lester, good evening. By some estimates, there are 700,000 adults in the U.S. who are transgender. And while we don't know the exact number of children, increasingly families are going public with what it means to be a transgender kid. Five-year-old Jacob LeMay is fierce. He loves karate and dogs and spaceships and playing with his sisters. So two sisters and you're the brother, right? Yeah. Were you always the brother? I'm um, not always. What were you before? I'm um, a sister. How come it changed? Um, because I wanted to be a boy. Okay. In the beginning, Mimi and Joe <laughs> LeMay were raising three girls. Um, <laughs> but when Mia was around two, she started saying, I'm a boy. Did you think it was a phase? I hoped it was a phase. Mia learned to write her name, but would immediately scribble it out. Jacob still remembers. I didn't like to write that name. I wanted to write J-A-C-O-B. Jacob? Yeah. J-A-C-O-B. You already picked it out, right? Yeah. You look beautiful right now. That, Even okay? something as simple as a haircut right wasn't. What do you think, Mia? I, I want someone to cut my hair, and I want it to be like that. Mimi didn't know what to think. I even found him kind of poking at himself, saying things like, why did God make me this way? Why did God make me wrong? I was confused and concerned, and I hoped that this obsession with being a boy would go away. But it only grew stronger. The LeMays went searching for answers. Her need to play boy roles and her need to be seen or spoken to as a boy at home became very persistent and very consistent. Those are the hallmarks of a possibly transgender child. Consistence, persistence, and insistence. And she was meeting all those markers. Pediatrician Dr. Michelle Forcier says gender identity is formed very early. It's not a fad or a phase. And I tell parents that even though they may feel or want to believe that. Your four-year-old probably knew that they were a boy or a girl at, you know, three, four, five years old, and that's a normal part of child development. Last spring, the LeMays went to Disney World and let their four-year-old dress as Prince Charming. All right, let's do it. He was really happy in that moment. He was being perceived as he wanted to. After agonizing for years, Mimi right. and Joe say they knew it was time to listen to their son. I explained to him that we can bring you to a new school and everyone will know you as a boy from the beginning. Right then he said, that's what I want. He said, I want to be a boy always. I want to be a boy named Jacob. Mm. And so last June, they cut his hair short, asked family and friends to call him Jacob and let him live publicly as a boy. He hasn't had any medical procedures, not, not on hormones, yeah, right? Yeah, that won't Way be too soon for that. Yeah, way too soon for that. People are going to hear your story and think four is really young. Mm -hmm. But a mother's heart knows when her child is suffering. All of this is new terrain, but many doctors who work with transgender kids now support families making the transition at an early age. We have a long history of children who have been shut down and told, no, you can't be a boy, or no, you're not a girl. We know those kids suffer, and there's a host of bad health outcomes and psychiatric outcomes. People who are transgender face a greater risk of anxiety and depression, and according to a 2011 survey, a startling 41% had attempted suicide. So it, would you tell parents that in some ways it's riskier to wait? Absolutely. In fact, what I say, the biggest harm is to do nothing. Ultimately, Jacob has made that choice in his mind and his heart. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not we accept it accept or not. Accept it, that's right. And now, Jacob says he's proud of who he is. Uh, what are you proud of about yourself? Um, because I'm a boy. You look really handsome. Are you ready for today? Are you ready for school? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want him to know how proud I am of him, how brave I believe he is and how no matter what, I am in his corner, wow, and I love him, and I always will. 
because he's my son. This really has been a journey for Jacob and his family. They have a long time before they even need to consider whether he wants medical intervention. Tomorrow, we'll bring you the story of another transgender child who's a few years older. That That's decision coming a lot quicker for correct. that family. You know, I was bombarding you with questions earlier, a lot of questions here. We want to let folks know if you want to ask questions immediately following our broadcast, Kate and the doctor you just heard from, We'll be hosting a live discussion on our Facebook. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.